Hi there, my name is Kasper, I'm a front-end developer from Poland, and over the past few years I've had the chance to code both at the big tech company and for a startup, so I've managed to cover quite a bit of different experience along the way. Welcome to my first video on this channel, where we're going to set up a basic Next4 project configuration. This will serve as our starting point for future videos, where we talk about more complex stuff and we also start building projects ranging from simpler to more advanced ones. So, without dragging this out any longer, let's jump into some development. Let's start by creating our project, we'll use the command shown here. We'll paste the command into the terminal and run it. First, the script will ask for the folder name where we want to create the project. Since we are ready in our desired folder, we can simply enter a dot, which means right here, and allow it to overwrite the contents. The folder is empty anyway, so nothing to worry about. Next, we'll choose our package manager, I prefer good old npm, so that's what I will select. We'll initialize the repository, but won't install any additional modules yet, we'll handle those manually later. Great, our application has been created. Looking at the package.json file, we can see the basic scripts. Using the dev script, we will launch the application to verify everything works correctly. As you can see, we are good. Let's create our remote repository to link with the one we just created locally. We'll give it a name and optionally a description. I will skip the description since I don't feel like writing one. We'll set the status to public and won't create any additional files. Everything we need will come from our local setup. Click create repository. Now let's copy the comments needed to link our remote repository, set up the main branch and push our initial commit. We'll add our files to staging, create the first commit and paste the comments we copied earlier. After refreshing the page we can see our newly created repo. We'll start by installing Prettier, which will format our code according to predefined rules. Let's copy the first command and paste it into the terminal. We'll also create two files, a configuration file for our formatting rules, and an ignore file to specify which files to skip during formatting. I recommend either studying the documentation to create rules tailored to your preferences, or my personal favorite for the time efficient, asking an AI assistant to generate them for you. You can find my rules in the repository linked in this video description. Let's go to the package.json file where I like to organize my scripts. I will label the default ones as default. Next, we'll add a prettier section with our new scripts. Let's test them using the app view file. I will create some formatting issues and run the check command first. As you can see, our mess was detected in up view. The second script will fix it automatically. Let's try it. Now let's configure Slint. We'll use a ready made module that provides Slint integration for Next applications. Let's copy the command and run it in the terminal. The configuration file has been automatically created and the module added to Next config. With Next function already includes basic configurations, but just as with Prettier, you can consult the documentation to add your own rules. Let's test this on AppView again. We'll add a rule that flags console logs as errors, then create a script with a console log. And there it is, a glaring red error. Now let's add new scripts to package.json in the SDIT section and run them. We can see our error has been detected. If errors can be fixed automatically, the second script will handle them for us. Otherwise, it will simply report them. If you are as lazy as I am, you probably don't want to constantly run scripts to fix formatting issues that pop up while coding. Assuming most of you use VS Code, I will show you how to set up automatic formatting when you save files. First, ensure you have both the Prettier and Deslin extensions installed. Create a .vs code folder and add a settings.json file inside it. In this file, add the properties editor format on save and editor code actions on save and inside it source pixel slint explicit. Save it and you're good to go. Let's revisit our app view file once more and make a mess in it, then save. Now you can see it's automatically fixed. 
That covers pretty random need for now. Let's move these changes to a feature branch, push to the remote repository and merge into main. Create a new PR from our branch to main. You can add a description if you want, I won't bother. Create and merge. Now switch back to the main branch, pull the changes and create a new branch called Fit Husky. Husky is a tool for managing Git hooks. It allows you to automatically run scripts at key points in the Git workflow, helping you enforce code standards, run tests and validate changes before they enter your repository. We'll install the package with the first command and initialize it with the second. After installation we can see a new .husky folder containing a pre-commit hook that initially runs the test script. We'll focus on two hooks, the pre-commit hook, which runs after you execute git commit and will run prettier and asnit for us, and the commit message hook, which runs after pre-commit, but before the commit is saved, checking that our message follows the correct format. Let's install LinStage. LinStage is a tool that runs scripts only on files that have been added to the stage area in Git, We'll use this with Prettier and Slint. We'll add a lint stage section in package.json that specifies which operations to perform on which files. Now let's add the command that triggers this process to the pre-commit hook. Time to test our setup. First we'll restore our Slint rule that flags console logs as errors. Then in our app.view file we'll introduce our test case. When we try to commit these changes, we're immediately hit with a clear error like a leaf to the face, and after fixing this issue and trying again, everything will work nicely. Next, let's set up commit lint. We'll install the necessary packages and add the command to the commit message hook. We'll create a commit lint config.js a configuration file where we extend the basic rules. In our case, we are adding a requirement to specify the type of changes in each commit. Let's test this by creating a commit with an incorrect message format. As expected, lint stage runs perfectly, but the process crashes afterward because we didn't include a change type in our message. After fixing this issue, everything works smoothly. Now we can push our changes, create a PR, merge to main, and pull the updated code to our local main branch. Now we'll connect Vercel to our repository, so each change on the main branch automatically deploys our application. If you don't have an account yet, create one and connect your GitHub account. After connecting your account, you will see your repositories list. Click Import next to ours. The default configuration looks good, so simply click Deploy. After brief processing, you will see the deployment completed successfully. Let's check our dashboard. There's our beautiful default application. Let's create a new branch called Test Deploy Test and modify our app view to display a simple H1 with Hello World. Then we'll merge this to main using the process we established earlier. Now our repo shows a small green check. Uh, clicking it displays our deployment status and provides a link to Vercel. Let's visit the site to verify our changes. As we can see, everything has been deployed perfectly. To enhance our security and gain more experience with GitHub Actions, we'll set up a workflow that automatically runs Slint and Prettier 
whenever a pull request is created or updated. Let's create a new branch called fit github actions. In our repository we'll create a directory structure, first a .github folder, then a workflows folder inside it, and finally a code quality YAML file. We'll start by giving our workflow a name, then specify its trigger, in our case it will run on push events. Next we'll define the workflow tasks. Our workflow will run on Ubuntu latest, and the first step involves checking out our code. Then we'll install Node.js with caching enabled for better performance. After that we'll install all our project dependencies. And finally we'll execute Prettier and Slint to check our code quality. Now let's create a PR with our new workflow and verify it works properly. We encountered some errors, so we can check what is it. You can see that I wrote format check instead of prettier check. That's our error. Let's push it again. Now we can see our GitHub Actions workflow detected that some of our files need formatting, so let's check that and push it again. As we can see, our workflow runs perfectly and once all checks pass, we can confidently merge the changes. We now have an additional layer of protection for our codebase. This was a very basic project setup that might give you a false sense of security against mess in your repository. I hope it helps in most basic cases and thank you for sticking with me until the end. Since I'm just starting my journey with recording and we'll be learning many things along the way, I encourage you to follow this channel and drop suggestions in the comments about what you think I could improve, because I will gladly take all advice into consideration. See you soon in the next videos.